A lot of students struggle with LSAT reading comp. They say you can't learn it. They say you can't improve in it. The good news is they're wrong. Today, I'm going to show you how to ace LSAT reading comp. And the secret is often doing less. It often comes down to knowing what not to do rather than what to do. For those who don't know me, my name is Steve Schwartz. I've been teaching the LSAT since 2005, and I personally increased my own LSAT score from a 152 to a 175. And one of my biggest breakthroughs on LSAT reading comp came when I realized I actually did better on reading comp when I did less work up front, when I took fewer notes. Because it turns out it takes time to write things down and it takes time to read what you write and the notes you take, the areas you highlight, oftentimes end up not even being useful and can be distracting, in fact. This is even more so the case now that the LSAT is online because the highlighting tools, the underlining tools are glitchy and unreliable. So I wouldn't want you to become dependent on them. I recommend avoiding them entirely. Now, on a separate note, a lot of students will recommend reading Scientific American or The Economist to get better at reading difficult, dense text. The thing is, these actually are not difficult or dense by LSAT standards. LSAT passages are written in a very particular style by the people who make the LSAT, and you have 400 of them to study from. So my question is, why would you ever go outside of LSAT material unless you're taking the LSAT six months or a year from now? I would recommend using some of the oldest passages for practice, for drills, for casual nighttime reading to help you fall asleep. And by the way, LSAC has added some of the oldest passages into Law Hub under the additional practice section. So you can use these for drill sets. And I'll share some ideas on how to do that a little bit later in this video without spoiling the newer practice tests for timed work and full length practice tests as test day approaches. Now, I would recommend to start with to avoid getting bogged down in the details, focusing on the big picture, the main idea, the primary purpose. Why did the author write this passage? What central idea are they looking to communicate? Get that idea down, get crystal clear on it, and knock out the general global questions, then do the detail-oriented questions, and finally, save the more inferential questions for last. You get to choose the order in which you approach the questions. You don't have to default to just the way LSAC lays them out, so I recommend as an order of approach, general global questions first, like main idea, primary purpose, passage organization, best title, tone, author's opinion, then the detail-oriented questions, and finally, save the more inferential questions for last. Now, I'll share some of those drill set ideas you can use for reading comp in just a moment, but first, I wanted to let you know that if you're looking for more advanced strategies and support on your LSAT prep journey, whether for reading comp or otherwise, at LSAT Unplugged, we offer live online classes via Zoom, on-demand video courses, small group coaching, and one-on-one -on -one coaching. You can check out the links below to find out more and to book a call with me and my team. We'd be glad to help you out. We have a wide variety of strategies that we can apply for LSAT reading comp using the Socratic review method. And one of these dual strategies is to take a reading comp passage and rewrite the entire thing in simpler language as if you were going to explain it to a five-year-old to make sure that you actually understand what the passage is saying what the language is saying, the difficult phrases, and the arguments presented to understand better the patterns in how LSAC goes about laying out their arguments. You could also try taking some of these oldest passages and just articulating the main idea for yourself and solving just the main idea questions. Now, why am I focusing so much on the main idea? Well, it's because if you don't get the main idea, you don't really get anything about the passage. You may end up having misinterpreted something in the text or you may be overly focused on a particular detail that actually wasn't that important, and this could lead you to miss several of the questions in the set. I'll often find that if a passage has six or seven questions associated, possibly half of them, like three or four of them, were laid around one central main idea. They revolve around one central main idea. And so if you make sure you get that main idea, the passage becomes a whole lot easier when it comes to solving the questions. And if you approach the questions in this order of general global questions, then local detail-oriented questions, and finally more inferential questions for last, you build your understanding of the passage as you go and solving the entire set becomes a whole lot easier. 
Anyway, folks, that's all for now. Feel free to reach out if I can help in any way. And in the meantime, I'll wish you all the best and take care.